This special drill is very satisfying, it's a lot of fun, and it's a great way to help develop feel and touch for all kinds of different tennis shots, like drop shot, uh, drop volleys, even lobs, any kind of shot where you're trying to hit something softly with a lot of touch. It's something I've had a lot of fun with over the years, and there's a couple simple steps to this, but basically what we're gonna do is learn how to catch the ball seamlessly on the racket. And this is a great way to learn your learning style as well. Are you more visual, auditory, or kinesthetic, you know, feel-based? So, first things first is we're gonna practice the, the toss. Uh, we want the toss to be about arm's length away, and about two or three feet above head height. And that's right about there is an ideal spot. And then after you get uh, kind of comfortable with uh, that toss spot, like that would be too close, there needs to be enough room that your arm and your hand can operate and bring the, the racket down in front of you, down to about waist height, a comfortable distance away from your body. After you have the, the toss pretty well down, that's about the right spot, then just kind of rehearse in your mind this movement with your racket. And what we're trying to accomplish here is bringing the racket down along with the ball at the same rate and speed so that as the, the ball and the racket fall, they sink together. And then what you're gonna wanna try to do is cradle the ball by turning the racket underneath the ball and then slowly decelerate the ball with the racket. And so the ball and the strings need to kind of be in harmony with each other as they fall down towards the court surface. And then in the last probably six or eight inches or so, I would, I would guess, is when you wanna actually start slowing the ball down. And the goal here is to cradle the ball. Imagine you're, you're kind of doing a, a balloon toss at a family reunion or a picnic or something like that, and you're throwing the water balloon back and forth and trying to cradle the, the balloon, or doing like an egg toss, and you're trying to catch the, the egg without it breaking. That's the same idea here of kind of cradling the ball, except we're using a hard, flat, you know, rigid, in this case, since the ball's not moving very fast, surface to try to do the, the cradling. So all the cradling has to be done with the movement of your hand and your arm. So once you kind of rehearse this a couple times and you get the general gist of it, go ahead and toss and try to bring the, the ball down gently on top of the strings. And here's what a, a poor execution would look like. If your racket's not in sync with the ball, and instead the racket's moving at a different speed than the ball, or you're too abrupt with your movement, then the ball will bounce on top of the strings as you bring the racket down. The ball also may kind of move around the racket face. It, it, you might have to kind of like catch it with the edge of the racket. If you do a really nice job of it, that was kind of medium. Uh, maybe you saw the, the bouncing there. And so, Ideally, the ball really doesn't move at all. There's no jostling against the strings. And this is where the different learning styles comes into play. There's three different ways that you can distinguish the quality of your catch. So let's talk about auditory. If uh, I'm just quiet for a couple and listen to, listen to a few on your end, I'm not sure, it'll probably pick it up. Here's a couple poor ones, just listen. Did you hear that? And so that would be like a poor example. Well, when you do a great job, you wanna listen for, <laughs> sorry, when you do a great job, you wanna listen for, for nothing, for basically for silence. So that was medium, there's like a little bit of vibration there. And I, that was like, there was nothing, at least audibly. The second thing, I just said vibration, which is feel, that would be kinesthetic. Uh, you wanna feel for the ball having a seamless, journey with the strings all the way to the end of the movement. If you feel the ball, <laughs> that was better than I wanted. If you feel the ball bouncing or dribbling on top of the strings, then the, the racket and the ball were out of sync. So feel for, that was a medium one, not very good. That was a medium one. Ooh, that was much better. That was much more seamless, and so much less vibration. Occasionally, for me, I'll get one where I just don't even feel it, and there's no vibration or like little mini bounces on the strings at all. That's very hard to do. Uh, spend some time on this and see if you can get one where you don't feel the ball connecting against the strings at all. And finally, of course, visually, you can watch. 
and you can visually see if the ball is vibrating or bouncing. That was a pretty good one. And ideally, use all three indicators. And I'll give you an idea of how well you're tracking with the ball. So this is a, just kind of a fun little awareness expanding exercise. But the way this translates into tennis is oftentimes in tennis, you actually want to absorb energy. You want to actually take force away from the ball and not send all the force back towards the other side of the courts. And that's where this kind of like softness and cradling can come into play. It's kind of a fringe, you know, you're not going to use it all the time, but it's very uh, desirable and enviable skill if you can develop it. It's something that's kind of elusive for, for a lot of players. So this is a fun exercise. Give it a try. Have some fun with it. Use your three different senses and see which one connects with you the most and have fun with it. If you enjoyed watching this lesson, then please consider going to order my book called Essential Tennis. You can get it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or anywhere else books are sold. And you can get it in paperback, hardcover, audiobook, or Kindle as well. And it's full of 38 chapters full of tennis insights for doubles players, singles players, that really get down to the core essentials of how to play better tennis. It's received some incredible feedback from world-class players and coaches, which I'm super grateful for. So if you enjoy my lessons, and this one in particular, which is taken right from the book, then definitely go check it out and order yours today. Thank you so much for your support.